Hello, hope we're good. We're back, uh, back after the St. Patrick's weekend here in Ireland for a, an update on what's going on with flex ops and what's going on in my head. So, where are we at? Last week we had a, yeah, last week was, <clears throat> as discussed, one of those weeks where it was like, did it go perfectly to plan? Absolutely not. Even my wording there is something I'm trying to work on as well, which is like, what what would a, something going perfectly to plan entail? I'm not too sure, but uh, as it transpired, despite maybe the bumps during the week or the challenges you face personally or professionally, you know, overall, when you look back at the week, it was okay. You know, and I think you're going to have okay weeks, you're going to have bad weeks. It's just the way it is. They're all just weeks. And at the end of the year, you bring 52 of them together and you reflect on, on how it's gone over a, a longer period. And if every week was the way you wanted it to be, well, I don't, I don't know what that would look like. I don't think that's, it's just not achievable. It's just not how it's going to happen. So particularly for, for agency owners, it's something that, uh, I've spoken about it before, but it comes up a lot. So <clears throat> anyway, it was my turn to face a bit of that uh, volatility, so to speak, or that turbulence. And this week is, shorter weeks are a funny one. I, I've often considered the idea of both for myself and in other businesses, mainly the agency I was with, you know, what, 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 was it, what does a four day a week look like what does it feel like for the people who are part of it, you know? Uh, I've heard, I know of many people that work in businesses that operate on a four day a week basis. They seem to, well, I mean, I think for the most part, people enjoy it. It's not that, not that surprising. I actually haven't thought about this earlier. I don't think I've heard of anyone, I know there will be, but I personally haven't heard of anyone that is in a four day a week that would say it isn't working, which in itself is, again, I'm operating on a very small sample size, but um, I had someone who was running an agency about to speak to me about this boat, it was just after Christmas, and they'd been doing it for about six months and they were gonna make it, they'd basically done like a three month trial and then extended it, and they were gonna go ahead and make it full time. And I thought fair play to them, I didn't have really much advice or or points to share on it because I, I didn't know too much about it. But I think, look, it depends maybe in terms of what your services you're providing, how well you can do it or, or how, how it plays out for your clients. But, well, I'm in a four day a week and we'll see how I get on, I don't know. I think it'll be, it's, it's fine for me. For me, it's a case of like, okay, how would it, how would it work? Like would I, I mean, would it be beneficial? I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it, but maybe I will now in the next two minutes. So as an example, I think one of the biggest challenges agency owners in particular face with going down to a four day a week is, well, what happens if my client needs something on that fourth, fifth day? And at least in the agency that I've been part of, or I've seen, or I work with, does the model work if your clients operate in a five day a week model? I don't, I don't know. I think I can see cracks in it. So if you're a tech product or if you're operating a, a commerce company or I don't even know, think of it, think of like a tech startup, right? Or a, a tech product. Maybe it's even a bad example in itself because there'll always be customer support, but it's kind of going to be 24 seven anyhow, to an extent. So if, if you're serving someone, if you're creating a product, so, Generally, you're not actually serving someone. It's quite different to being in an agency where you provide a service for clients because if you're offline when they're online, then what happens? Now, you could make the argument that it's the same thing as I just talked about, which is like, if you have a tech product and it breaks and someone has a problem and they contact you, what happens? So you need offline support, basically. I suppose what I'm trying to get at is, at least at the agencies I've seen, there's always this apprehension about the four day a week because, you know, you won't have the key people online 
for 20% of the week when your clients probably need you to be there or might need you. That in itself might be a bad way to look at it because can we build systems or can we build processes that mean that those clients don't need us on those days? Probably. Um, and I'd imagine that's how many agencies approach it. It's like, okay, we're not going to work on a Friday. And the people that want to keep working with us will respect that and understand it and know the steps they can follow. If there is something urgent, there will be someone to speak to. So yeah, I'm sure there are ways around it. But in terms of productivity, <clears throat> if you even think about it for myself, so someone that's on their own, you really have X number of hours in a week that you can bill out. And, you know, if I could find a way to essentially mean that, uh, you know, it's one day a week where I could do whatever, provided I worked more hours the other four days, because I would have to work more hours the other four days, um, it would probably be fine. But at least for now, it's not something I'm personally considering. But anyhow, this kind of went off and at times into about four day weeks. I think it, it ultimately stems from uh, my point about this being a short week for me and it's interesting how it can impact your, your productivity. Like I would say in the two or three hours this morning I've really done pretty much the key things I need to for today, which is good. Um, but it just maybe focuses your attention a bit more and I wonder do you lose that? If you're always having a four day week do you lose that focus? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. but. Lots of hypotheticals. Anyhow, that's probably the, the, the general thought for today. Business update wise, not a tremendous amount to, to go into really. Um, key things this week, potentially need to confirm two more discovery sessions, which is really exciting. So the, the volume of discovery session has really picked up, which is brilliant. Uh, we've got a couple of proposals out to potential clients. Uh, one of which I'm quite confident on, the other I'm just waiting on, literally I don't really know how they feel about it yet, so it's hard to say either way, but in both cases I'm confident I could help them. So yeah, it's it's a positive, positive place to be in terms of the new business. One of the videos I think I'll do later this week is talking about building a healthy pipeline, which is a journey I'm still on, but you know, it's one I've been building towards, and it's one that comes up all the time at the moment with agency owners, so I thought it'd be worthwhile touching on. But for today, I want to go into, I've done a few parts of my my story now, and I wanted to do the fourth part because I think it's arguably the shortest. So I wanted to do it today, and then what I think I'll do is on Friday, I will discuss the fifth part, which is probably, I think probably one of the longest bits. It's the bit I want to go into the most detail on anyhow, so where are we to date with this? So if I can, <laughs> I'll figure out how to put the uh, the previous part of the story up here somewhere. I don't know if it's going to be up here or down here or where it'll be, but uh, if you click up there in that region, you'll see the previous part. But as of right now in the story, we've, we've built up to the point where I'm about to join the agency that I was with for five years. So I join and I'll just, I'll just jump into this. I join and at this point it's an account management role. Okay. So a team of three, I join account manager. And again, keep in mind that I suppose the founder and I had agreed, Connor had agreed that you know, we see how this goes basically. Um, because again, I've talked about in the last part of this where uh, I've got my own freelancing business to a point where it was doing really well. So I had clients and I couldn't just drop them. So I told Connor that, that was all fine. Really, my role in the agency at this point was to work with clients and, and really be the point of contact. And at, at this stage, I didn't really know what that meant. <laughs> Uh, what I mean by that is, I think this happens quite a lot when you come into a small business, but there's an element of figuring out to be done, um, not just by you yourself within your role that you've been hired for, but also for the business within the role they've hired someone for. So for example, an agency owner with three or four people on their team, if they hire for an account manager, they must have reasons for that. 
but equally I know they don't have everything figured out when it comes to what they want from that person or what they expect from that person or what they really need versus what they kind of need. So I think it's fair to say what, what really transpired in the first few months was a bit of figuring out in both party sides. So the agency was kind of maybe changing things up a bit, trying to go in a certain direction. I myself were trying to get a, was trying to get a feel for the role and, and the founder and the other people on the team but really what started to happen was I was able to quite quickly build relationships with some key people, some of the key accounts. And quite quickly, and this is something that comes up in conversations all the time today with me and my clients is I was able to take pressure off the founder because I could take or I could handle the tough questions or handle the tough emails or have the conversations with the clients, whereas they didn't have to do all that. And I think that was probably one of the initial things that really helped me establish myself in the business and yeah I mean at least from my perspective it went really well in those early months because look I'm not gonna lie if you're working with a if you're in an agency and you're an account manager and the accounts you're leading are growing I mean it looks pretty good so of course I was doing things well maybe doing a bit more being a bit more proactive than you know the people at the agency had been able to before because they were so busy but by simply being present and asking questions and following up with call after calls with good emails, etc., just been doing simple things very well. Um, yeah, I guess I was able to help the, the agency grow quite directly through the actions I was taking. And that got us to the end of the year. And by the end of the year, I think we had about five or six people, four or five, six people. And it was a question of, right, we need to hire more people, we think. <laughs> um, if we were gonna do that, who would we hire? And really the following year then, I think that's really where I started to help the, the owner in a more general sense. So, you know, if you think about the team structure design, it was kind of the owner and then everybody else. And I suppose it was my own personal ambition, but you know, I really wanted to, I suppose, showcase my ability or, or show my ambition to be part of a you know, part of a leadership team or, or one of the leaders of a business that was growing. And through that, I took actions that I suppose supported the founder in more ways than just account management. So helping him operate the business, um, maybe handling certain situations across the business forum, even on the hiring front, for example, uh, maybe just being a bit of a sounding board for the owner in terms of general stuff that he's working on. So. I think quite quickly what happened was really, and this is an extension to the first couple of years. The first couple of years were, you know, us building out a good team. Honestly, the majority of the good hires we made over the five year period I was at that agency happened in probably the first couple of years. And I think there were great people that joined after that, but there were also a lot of people that joined after that that probably were hired into roles that maybe we either didn't really need or hadn't really thought through properly or that we made hires for that we didn't really need to in general at all. So it's less about the people that were hired, more about why they were hired, but that's, uh, I suppose, a separate topic. And I think, you know, the people that were brought into the business, a lot of them are still there today. They were brought into the business in those first couple of years. So I think that's a good sign. Equally, those hires, because they were good people, it meant that even the, the slightly more senior people like myself, could then begin to focus on extracting ourselves from the business and doing our things that were helping the business grow in our ways. So it was an extension of what had happened with myself and the owner to, to an extent. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, it, it, it got the business moving in the right direction at a quicker pace, which is only a good thing. So, you know, that kind of brings you up to the end of 2019. And at that point, then I can't remember where we were exactly as an agency at that point, but if you think about what was about to happen in a global scale, <laughs> end of 2019, you have grand plans, things are going very, very well, but then 2020 happens. And I think 2020 and 2021, and probably 2022, that two or three year period is definitely almost a, a full video because there's a lot of change in there. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, very quick, turnaround in terms of things happening within the business. Like overnight we go from a client spending 100K a month to 
wanting to spend two or three times that. And it all kind of was because a lot of things that happened were consequences of, of global circumstances, so like basically COVID. Um, but anyway, that's that's kind of where my we're at with my story now. We're up to the end of 2019. Uh, as of that point, I can't remember my exact title, but my role was largely overseeing all the account management side of the business, plus supporting the founder in a more general sense. And uh, yeah, that was just, those first two years were incredible because the business just went from strength to strength. We got some more brilliant clients in the door. We built up some great. We built up a great reputation in the space. And we were doing great work for clients. So, I mean, overall, it was, it was going very, very well. But I will take that and build on it later in the week. And I feel very out of breath for some reason. I'm standing up, which is maybe a part of it, but that's mildly concerning. Um, what else? That's about it, really. I'm going to stop the story piece there for now. I just wanted to kind of get through those first two years because, I, honestly, I can't. There are parts of it I struggle to remember. But it's a bit of a blur but it was largely account management orientated and then it was like this transition into helping the owner and supporting them in different ways which is something you see a lot of people do right there's always one or two people within the business that maybe join into quite a specific role and then they form you know they form a partnership with the owner or owners or leaders in the business and they become a bit more involved at a higher level so that happened and um yeah you know, beyond that, then we'll get into it in more detail later in the week. But really, that's it for now. I'm going to hop off and do a bit more work today. And yeah, be back tomorrow with a more general topic, I think. But anyway, that's it. Speak tomorrow.